hello, good afternoon, <laughs> good morning, good evening, all the things. Hi, Tina. <laughs> Now, I don't know if Ryan is going to be joining us. Today is the day she's getting back um, from visiting with family. And so usually uh, Ryan is in the comments answering questions, um, keeping away spam comments. So I do apologize if there is a lot of things happening in the comments. So first things first, just get this out of the way here. I have two recordings going on. One I'm doing Instagram Live. I have another camera going for YouTube. I had a lot of requests and I'm very sorry that I didn't do this sooner, but I had a lot of requests to please save and post these lives to YouTube. A lot of you are saying that there is a ton of really helpful information in these lives that you are wanting to pause and rewind and restart, which isn't really the, a good capability with videos saved here on Instagram. And I had a lot of my YouTube audience um, request them over there as well. So I'm doing it. It's gonna look a little funky because I'm looking here and my video camera is here, but you know, it will work. It will work for now until I figure out something <laughs> a little bit better. So today, you are in the right place if you are wanting help and ask questions about closing out your budget. It's the first of the month. For a lot of you, for me, it's the start and the first day of a new tracking period. This is also the most confusing kind of topic and step in my budget by paycheck um, method and process. I get a lot of people asking questions about this, a lot of confusion, so I said, hey, we're all closing out our budgets right now. Well, a lot of us are. Let's go ahead and do it now. I printed out all of your questions and from the question box. We have them all highlighted. And I'm going to be going through those very quickly first because I feel like answering these are going to answer a lot of the questions you might throw up here on Instagram Live. So let's just dive in. First and foremost, let me say this. Closing out your budget is part of my last step in the budget by paycheck process. It is more important to me that you learn the consistent habit of tracking your spending before you are really concentrating and focusing on using the Where Do My Money Go worksheets and closing out your budget. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. It is more important to me that you learn the consistent habit and how to track your expenses and spending correctly over filling out these worksheets and going over and closing your budget. I'd rather have you learning and tracking your spending than closing out your budget. Because here's the thing, you can't get to this step of closing out your budget without learning and developing that consistent habit of tracking your spending. And for a lot of us, Tracking your spending is something that we were never taught. It's something we were never learned. It's something we never expected to do. So some of these, and it is, it's very much like accounting. And so it takes some time to learn maybe how to track certain spending correctly, right? It's different spending scenarios. That's a lot of the questions that I got on the question boxes, very specific scenarios and circumstances with track. How do you do this for this situation? How do you track this for this situation? But once you learn how to do those correctly, right? Because we kind of repeat those things in our lives. I feel like then closing out your budget is going to be a lot easier. So if you're freaking out and saying, Nico, I don't get it. My numbers aren't just adding up. I, I don't, I don't understand the closing. Out. That's fine. That's okay. If you're not there yet. Okay, it took me a long time. I think I introduced this step in my third year of being of doing the budget mom and doing my budget. So tracking your spending is way more important, way more valuable to what you are doing. Am I saying that closing out your budget is not important? No, we do it for a reason, but we take baby steps. We walk the steps up to where we need to be. Okay, tracking your spending is one of those steps. 
Will you please share how to track? I struggle with where to put things and when to count lines and when I shouldn't count them. Yes, I do have a ton of videos saved here on my Instagram. Check out my start here highlight bubble. It's going to show you how to access my video series. I have a whole series about tracking your spending. Absolutely. Hello, Alexandra from the Bronx. Good afternoon. Book recommendations, please. Okay, I will possibly get into book recommendations after the video, after you go close out your budget. Okay, so let's get in these really quickly. If you were paid monthly and your husband is paid weekly, should you close out monthly or weekly? If you are a paycheck budgeter and you are using my budget by paycheck process and you are working with a partner, you are on one pay schedule, your partner is on another. I talk about combining paychecks. So in this instance, she's getting paid monthly. Her husband is getting paid weekly. Doesn't have to be monthly or weekly. What if you're budgeting twice a month? So let's say for instance, it depends. If you're getting paid monthly and your husband is getting paid weekly, could you combine the first two paychecks of your husband's paychecks? Budget, that's your first budget of the month and then take your monthly paycheck and his last monthly paycheck and budget the last budget of the month for the second time. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to budget and create a budget every single time you're receiving a paycheck if you're working with a spouse. Remember, we wanna kinda of simplify things, simplify to the point where we're not losing effectiveness. So it's okay for you to combine paychecks to simplify that process a little bit so you're not creating <laughs> five, six budgets a month, and that's okay to do. Um, can you go over how to close out your budget when you're using credit cards? The reason I don't talk about this very often, I know a lot of you do and pay off the card every month. You're using them responsibly. That's wonderful. That's great. I did a whole one hour video tutorial going over this in my new course, Building Blocks of Budgeting, and I show you how to do it electronically, which is a lot easier. So I don't know if I'm gonna do more close out using credit card scenarios, we'll see. I just wanna let you know that's where I did that video tutorial. Income received this month, but is used for next month. It's on my expense trackers. Is that included in this month or next month? So here's the thing. If you are receiving income, let's just use uh, March for example, okay? Let's say your last paycheck is on March 25th, but you're using that income to pay bills for the following month, the upcoming month in April. So she's receiving money this month, but it's used for next month. Some of that paycheck is gonna be paying some of those bills in April. It depends on when your tracking period begins and ends. Let's talk about that for a second. If now, if you budget from the first of the month to the last of the month, regardless of your pay schedule, you're like me. So I used to get paid on the 5th and the 20th of every month. I would track from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, regardless of when I was receiving my paychecks. If you were like a lot of my other community members, you track based on your pay schedule, meaning you're tracking from the first paycheck you receive of the month to the first paycheck of the following month. So you're tracking based on when you're getting paid. And that's okay to do too. How do you know when to set up your tracking period? It is completely up to you and what you feel comfortable with. I do it from the first of the month to the last of the month because in my mind, that's the way it clicks. In my mind, that's how it registers and it's easier for me. Have I tried doing it the other way? Yes. Why? Because a lot of this is trial and error. Remember, this is not just about numbers. It's discovering more about yourself and what works and what doesn't. And that's okay if what works for you isn't like what everyone else is doing. That's okay. So I recommend if you're just starting this tracking your spending process, do it both ways. Spend one month tracking from the beginning to the end. Spend one month doing it based on your paycheck schedule. See how it feels with you. See if things make more sense along the way as you're going through it, right? 
So not everyone has the same tracking period. So if you are using income in one month, but it's being used for the other, so for instance, example, when I was getting paid on the 20th of the month, I would use some of that paycheck to cover my rent for the upcoming month. So when I closed out my budget, guess what? The income that I was using in the upcoming month would be sitting in my starting balance. It would then be added to the income or inflow section of my budget because I planned on using it. Okay, does your BBP Excel doc, do you use your budget by paycheck Excel document to close out? I do. I use both. Please go over how to close out the end of the month while being paid by weekly. So we just kind of went over that. What could be the issue if you're consist consistently off, but all your accounts individually balance out? Here's what I find with that. If you're finding that you are closing out your budget and you're trying to get your income and your expenses to match, meaning you're coming up with a zero number, income minus expenses equals zero. If you are doing that and something is off and your numbers are off, but all of your accounts are on point, they're all balancing out, but when you close out their, your budget, it's not. Here's what it could be. There's many, many different scenarios. Number one, you're counting and tracking your transfer between accounts incorrectly. Remember, when we track our spending, what does that say? It says we're tracking our spending. We're not tracking the movement of money between our accounts. So if you transfer money from your savings to your checking account, that's a transfer between accounts. Does it affect our balances? Yes. Is it true spending? So anytime you are tracking just money movement, not necessarily spending, but money movement, you have to ask yourself, is this really spending? So for instance, when I move money from a savings account to a checking account to use, guess what I call it? A savings inflow into my life. And then I track the spending. That savings inflow is a deposit into my checking account. And then I track the spending of that savings, which is, is money, a withdrawal, taking money out of my account. But what I'm really interested in and what I'm really tracking is the spending of that money. So one, it could be the way you're tracking transfers between accounts. Okay, that's another one. Number two, your starting balance plays a big role in closing out your budget. If you do not understand what your starting balance is, it's gonna be very hard for you to look for possibilities of things going wrong. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about what starting balance is specifically and what you need to close out your budget. So those are the two biggest things that I see. Sometimes what happens, it could just be a number error. Like I do this all the time, I'll be off by like a couple hundred dollars and I'll go and look and be like, oh, I forgot to just include that transaction in my calculation. Sometimes it takes me like five minutes. Here's a big thing. If you are off when you're closing out your budget, do not fret, stress, or worry, or obsess, and sit there and spend hours trying to figure it out. That's not what this process is for. If it's doing that to you, stop and just move on. There's always another chance and opportunity to do it again next time. I have so many people who message me like, Nico, I've been sitting here for two hours trying to figure out why I'm off by $200. Who cares? If it's, if it's costing you two hours of your time, it's too expensive. I don't want anyone to be in a position where this process is doing that to them. Sure, it might be stressful at some points. Sure, it might get frustrating some points, but never to a point where you're spending hours and hours and hours of your life sitting at a desk stressing it out over $200. It's, it, it could be many different things. Give yourself grace. You're still learning and move on to the next one. Okay, do you roll over unspent money in your envelopes to start each envelope or start each envelope at zero? Yes, it depends. What do I do when closing out my budget when I have leftover cash in my cash envelopes? Couple of different things and you have some choices. The things that I do are two things. 
I use it for a financial goal or I, or I roll it over into the next month to be used for my spending with the new month's budget or that new paycheck budget. So how do I determine between, do I, how do I determine if I use it for a goal or if I roll it over? You should be doing your budgets ahead of time. You should have your budget calendar, which is why the budget calendar is high up on my list. And it's like step two of my process. You should have your budget calendar filled out and done before you get that money, before you receive your paycheck. So if I have left over in my cash envelopes and I'm closing out my budget, what I'll do is I'll look ahead to my budget calendar that's done. I'll say, okay, hmm, do I have anything happening in my life where I might want a little bit of extra wiggle room in my variable spending envelopes or categories where I'm gonna to wanna to roll some of that money over. For instance, my big thing, like this recently happened to me, I had some leftover money in my food budget and I was going into a new tracking period. I decided to roll over some of that unused money into the next month because I knew it was a Super Bowl and I knew I didn't have it in my budget but I knew I was gonna need some little bit of extra wiggle room in my food budget because we were hosting people and I wanted to buy some extra food for the Super Bowl. So you have to look out in advance and cover your bases. Because if you have leftover cash in your cash envelopes, that's great. But let's make sure we utilize and use those dollars in the smartest way possible. So look ahead, see if it can be helpful in a new budget. Number two, using it for a financial goal. If I look in the month ahead and I say, okay, I really don't need the money, then I throw it at my number one priority financial goal. Okay, whether that's paying off debt, whether that's investing, whether that's saving for a sinking fund. So I determine it based on looking ahead first and seeing, will this be helpful? If not, it goes to a financial goal. When you roll over, let's talk about that for a second. When you roll over unused cash from one tracking period to the next, that should be included up at the top of your budget in your income section because it's been, it's planned on being spent. So when I said I used money from my food envelope to go to the next month for the Super Bowl, I had food envelope rollover at the top because I was going to be using that. Another way you could do this is include it on your expense tracker. Like I have an expense tracker for cash spending and I have an expense tracker for checking account spending. Include the amount that you're rolling over from your cash envelopes up on your starting balance of your cash expense tracker. Because if it's included in your starting balance, it will be there when you're where to my money go worksheets and you can balance out your income to expenses that way. Okay. Any tips for making this process easier? I always say simplify the areas of money movement in your life. If you have 15 checking accounts, this is going to be very, very hard. And why do you have 15 checking accounts? So the, the first thing that I like to do is simplify this process as much as you can without losing effectiveness in your life. Do you really need all of the areas of money movement that you have? Do you need your three checking accounts? Do you need your 18 savings accounts? Do you need your 30 investment accounts? Okay, so you have to start looking that. Is at all the tools in your financial life, I'm talking about accounts, everything. Is this helping me? Or is it just making my life more complicated? I kind of approach everything in my life that way. Is this beneficial, impactful, and helping me in my life? Or can it go? Or can I reorganize and kind of re-strategize what I'm doing with my money here to simplify that process? Maybe not going all the way down to one checking account, but simplifying my five checking accounts into two. Okay. Do you count your sinking funds as savings when you're closing out your budget? I do. So anytime I am saving money, I have a savings category. It is considered quote unquote spending in my expense tracker. So when I'm saving for my baby fund, 
in the description, I'll have baby fund. In the category, it's savings. And then my withdrawal from my checking account or withdrawal from my cash that I'm saving. So absolutely. Is it okay to always be off? I never seem to be get to get it right. We just talked about that. Move on. Spend a little bit of time in being an investigator. And if you can't find it, oh well, that's okay. I am paid monthly on the 15th. Is it okay to close out my budget on the 14th of each month instead? Yes, absolutely. Okay. What does this look like when you save your bill money a month ahead of time? Let's talk about starting balance. This trips up a lot of people and why do we use it? Okay, I'll, I'm going to post right after this live on my stories. I'm going to post an article on my stories that everyone needs to read. If you are having troubles tracking your spending, your starting balance plays a huge role in this process starting balance okay let me go ahead i'm just gonna i have my workbook here next to me okay so on my cash expense tracker you can see here starting balance up here at the top zero that means that i am not rolling over any cash this month i'm not using or rolling over any unused cash from my envelopes in the month of February into March. So zero. If we look at my checking account expense tracker right here, okay, the 1818.44, that is my starting balance in my checking account. Your starting balance is what is in your checking account the first day of your tracking period which for a lot of us, if you're tracking from the beginning of the month to the end of the month is today. What is in, because I, you should be closing out your budget and starting your new tracking period on the same day. If you are closing out your budget on the first, you should be starting your new tracking period on the first. Because so you don't want to be missing days in between there. So your starting balance is what is in your checking account the day you are closing out your budget and starting a new tracking period. So I closed out my budget yesterday. So yesterday, when I sat down to close out my budget and begin my new tracking period, I had this much money in my checking account. Nico, what do you do when you save up your month ahead of bills and you're saving up and using that money? Then it should be in your starting balance. I also get questions, Nico, I have a checking account cushion. Where is that reflected in my budget? Your starting balance. Your starting balance for your cash. If you are rolling over any unused cash from one tracking period to the next, you need to include that on your cash starting balance. Your overall starting balance is your cash starting balance plus your checking account starting balance. And that's going to be on your where did my money go worksheet when you do your budget category breakdown. It's going to have you break down your inflow for the month. Starting balance is part of that equation. You need to know that. I usually only count rollover from our main account. I forget to count our other account balance, so that's why I've been off. There you go, Michelle. Yes, exactly. So if I get paid weekly, should I do this every week? We just went over that. It depends. You can, you should not, okay, wait a minute. If you're getting paid every week, you should not be tracking your period for a week's time. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. That's a lot of work. Start with your, maybe if you're paid every week, you can do the first of the month to the last of the month, or maybe you can do the first paycheck of the month to the last paycheck of the month. That's up to you. So that's what starting balance is. And that's really important. But like I said, I'll post an article that really shows visuals and getting that taken care of. How, okay, so we talked about how to account for your checking account buffer. Okay, I'm gonna show you an example. Show my checking account cushion. I always talk about this. It's one of the things I talked about, about financial stability in your life and having a checking account buffer or cushion in your budget, in your life, for your money management. 
Okay, especially if you are using a zero based budget and you're a cash envelope user. What is my starting balance right now? I can tell you. What is my checking account cushion? 1818. That's my checking account cushion. Why? Because the day that I closed out my budget and started out a new tracking period, all my bills were already cleared and taken out. So I knew I had nothing else coming out from my checking account. What was left in there is my checking account buffer, my checking account cushion. My checking account cushion is only reflected here on my starting balance. Now, if you plan to use your check, now sometimes crap happens, right? Life happens. You use your checking account cushion, just write it on your expense tra tracker. If you have to spend money and you know that it's eating up your checking account cushion, just write down the expense. If you know ahead of time that you're gonna be using your checking account cushion, you can add it up in the income or inflow section of your budget. So for instance, for example, this month for the month of March, I knew ahead of time that I was gonna be using my checking account cushion. This is my real budget. Right here up in my inflow, it says cushion, $50. See that cushion $50 why did I write that there because I knew I had to offset something in my spending with my cushion so I wanted my budget to zero out so I'm taking I'm going to a baby shower I'm going to a baby shower in the month of March I remembered that because it was on my budget calendar and I was able to prepare ahead of time and figure out okay how am I gonna pay for this event in my life I decided to cash flow it and use my checking account cushion. If you don't know ahead of time, that's okay. You don't have to have, that's the thing. Your expense trackers are not going to match your budget. Stop trying to make your expense trackers and spending match your budget. They will not match. Your budget is an estimated spending roadmap what you think you're gonna be doing. It's not what's actually happening. We want to try to stick to that roadmap as much as possible, but crap happens. Life happens. But you want to accurately reflect it in your expense tracker. Do not try to smudge your numbers and your spending to match your budget. That is lying. That is cheating. That is cheating yourself. I have a lot of people who do that, and I never understood it. I think because us mentally, right, when we get a perfect plan, pretty plan written down, and when we aren't able to stick to it, we try to fit ourselves into that budget rather than fitting our budget around what's accurately reflected in, and happening in our lives. And that's really important. Okay. All right. So let's talk about what does closing out your budget even mean? I, I got that a lot. I'm like, wow, that's a great question. I never really talk about that. So the typical definition that you're going to hear, okay, as you know, the budget mom doesn't do thing kind of like what everyone else does. What you typically hear though is it simply means to compare the amount you expected to spend to the amount you are actually spending. That's usually the, the typical kind of answer that you find when you Google that. But if you know me and you've been following me, you know that's not why I created the Where Do My Money Go worksheets. That is not why I close out my budget. I don't close out my budget to see if my spending matches my income. Like to me, that's not really important. What's really important to me is seeing the trends of my spending, the areas where I can possibly improve, the clarity that I find, the knowledge I gain to make better financial decisions in the future. This is all about not just writing your spending down and tracking your spending. This is about understanding what that spending is telling you. There is a big difference. If you are doing this simply to have numbers down on a piece of paper and a piece of paper that's beautifully colored in highlighter colors, don't waste your time <laughs> because that's not why we do it. Sure, it looks pretty. The highlighter method that I use to track my spending looks great, looks pretty. That's not why I do it. For me, 
like for instance, the where did my money go debt and savings breakdown worksheet. It's because I got so sick and tired of being told, oh, you need to know how much money you save every month. You need to know how much debt you're paying off. To be honest with you, I don't care about that overall number. What I find more interesting and more valuable is knowing what exactly, what debt I'm paying off. Did I pay off one, am I putting my debt payments towards one credit card? Is it going towards one credit card and one loan? Is it going towards one credit card and three student loans? What debt exactly am I paying off? Same with the savings side. I wanna know how much I save total. I wanna know broken down what specifically I was saving for. Why is that important? Because 99% of the time in real life, you are trying to reach one, more than one financial goal. We're working towards more than one financial goal at a time. That's just real life. I can't think in the whole eight years, nine years I've been doing this where I've only been working towards one financial goal. To me, I, I just feel like that's for real life, that's not realistic. So the question becomes, when you are working on multiple financial goals, your, where you're throwing your money, your spending should align with your values and your goals in order of importance. So let's take savings for example. Okay, I saved $800 for, this, for the month. And these are just example. But in that, out of that $800, I saved for three things. One was my husband's birthday for $600. One was for an upcoming wedding, $100. And one was for my new pair of shoes, $100. I threw the most money towards my husband's birthday. That goes to show that my husband's birthday is the most important to me. Why? Because most of the dollars that I saved went there. Where you throw your money should align with your goals, the importance, priority, and your values. The where do my money go worksheet, debt and savings breakdown worksheet tells you and shows you that. It gets outside of just that overall figure. So for me, closing out your budget is not just comparing what I actually spent versus what I budgeted, which was most people, that's the definition they'll tell you why you close out your budget. It's that's not right. You do this to learn more about yourself, your spending habits, your trends, your goals, it's about building knowledge so we can improve and make our budgets better as we go. Okay, that, that's really important. How do you include sinking funds as your income? Just like I did here in my March budget. I'm using a sports sinking fund, $150, up here in the inflow of my budget. I did that because my, my beautiful, amazing son starts wrestling tournaments all day Saturday tournaments every Saturday until the end of April. So I gave myself $50 every tournament in cash. I do pack, I pack food, I pack a cooler when we go, but this is for things that he might want to get at the concession stand or whatnot. There's a little bit of playroom, wiggle room within our spending. That's why I save my sports sinking fund. So you're going to include it up here in your inflow or income section of your budget. And then when you use, I don't have any examples, when you use sinking funds in your life, remember, you're going to have one line transaction. It's going to be a savings inflow into your life. Then the line after is going to be you tracking the actual spending of that money. One's a deposit, one's a withdrawal. If you use rebate apps like Ibotta, do you add that income into your income category? Yes. I did a whole reel about the different categories I use for tracking money coming into my life. Yes, I track them as different things because they are different things. We have earned income, other income, savings use, starting balance. So just for you just asked about an app, I just got my Ebates check, or now it's called Rakuten check. 
$80. So it goes as a other income. You see this line and I have a line through it. That's me pulling out cash for my cash envelopes. This is my checking account. When I pull out cash for my cash envelopes, it decreases the balance in my checking account, right? But this member, I don't care about movement of money. I care about the spending. This is not the spending of that money. <clears throat> so I put a line through it. Don't count that when you're closing out your budget. What you wanna do is track the spending on your cash expense tracker. That's really important. So I think that's all the questions I wanted to get through. Is using a percent important on calculating your court categories? No, no, and no. I do not believe in percentage-based budgeting in area, any areas of your finances at all. I think trying to stick yourself in these one-size-fits-all percentages is not helpful or useful in any way. Some people like using them. I do not. We're all so unique. We need to throw away these one size kind of fits all percentages and start doing things based on our own unique situations. Okay. And I went over the biggest benefits I think of closing out my, your budget. Should you be doing this step? Yeah, eventually. Absolutely. I have gained and learned so many things at this process by doing this. But first comes tracking your spending. Yeah, great to hear this. I've debated percentage as well. Why do we gravitate towards percentage-based budgeting or saying like 10% should go towards household, 5% should be going towards fund, 5% should be going, or the 50, 20, 30 budget, you know? Well, because it's easy, easier. It kind of gives us this like perimeter. But does that perimeter really... It goes back to my budgeting box. It's like that perimeter is being handed to you and you're expected to fit in there. But what happens when you don't fit? You start questioning yourself rather than the damn box. And that is, that's where a lot of the guilt, shame, and, the, and feeling like we're not capable of managing our money when we are. We just have a screwed up process and box that we're trying to squeeze ourselves into. One of the ways, the reasons I don't like the percentage based budgeting is because let's talk about like lifestyle inflation for one. Just because your income increases doesn't mean those things and those percentages get to increase either. People who live in a high cost of living area. Sometimes that's just not reality to fit our, our household expenses or our real estate expenses in that percentage. And that's okay. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Your unique situation just looks different than this one size fits all solution that you've been handed. So I hate percentages. Some months my eating out um, goes to 75% go 75 all the Starbucks. Yeah. Like what if I were to give myself a 20% 20, 20 of my food budget goes to eating out? That ain't gonna work, I can tell you right now because the weeks that we have a ton of sports going on, our eating out budget goes way higher than the, than the weeks that we don't have anything going on and I'm at home cooking, right? And so I feel it goes back to like kind of fudging the numbers and trying to get our lives to fit into these unrealistic type of boxes that just don't work. You know, and that's okay. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I go back. Does anyone have any uh questions about closing out your budget? I know this is a very big, big topic. How much do you keep in your checking account per month? Just enough to pay bills and some wiggle room? So for me, what I do, yes, essentially, yes. I like, when I do my budget, so when I do my budget, my fixed expenses right here on my budget is things that are coming out of my checking account. So I have enough money in there to cover these fixed expenses plus my checking account cushion. 
So if you don't have a checking account cushion, you might put in, you know, another $20 on top of your fixed expenses to kind of build that up as you go. So when I budget my cushion, look it, it's right there as a fixed expense. I know it's mirrored on here, I'm sorry. Cushion, right here, cushion, $100. Cushion, $100. I treat my checking account cushion like a fixed regular bill in my life. Every single month I contribute to my checking account cushion to replenish it every month, no matter what. It's either $100 or $200 every month, depending on my budget, to replenish what I'm using out of there. Yeah. If I do cash envelope but have to use my card to purchase, do I just deposit the money back in? Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. So it used to happen to me a lot when I was just learning how to use the cash envelope method. What I would do is I would have cash in my cash envelope method all ready to go and then I was forced to spend my debit card. So back then I didn't have a lot of wiggle room. Now I just would let my checking account cushion eat it, right? I have that checking account cushion so I don't have to like run down to the bank and redeposit the money or even do it when I go to the bank again. So, but if you are in your checking account cushion is lower, then yes, you would take the money out of your checking account or out of your uh, cash envelopes and deposit it into your bank account to replenish that balance back up. Yes. And remember, we're tracking the spending of those dollars, not the movement and money. So just because you deposited that money back into your account and it increased your balance back up, it's not spending of the money. The spending of the money is the actual transaction of the spending. So any tips on how to budget without using cash envelopes? It's everything I do. Everything I teach and preach can be done with using cash envelopes or not. Because credit cards are too easy to swipe. <laughs> um, okay. Had an auto payment that came out early and had I not had my small cushion, it would have been $30 fee. Yeah, I can't even tell you how much I was charged in little itty bitty overdraft fees when I first started this process. That was one of the things that I struggled with. It was like $20 here, $20 there, 20 Because for me, what happened was I never, I always kept my checking account balance really, really low, like down to zero. And so when I had a bill that was higher than expected or a bill that I forgot because I wasn't properly managing my finances and I honestly didn't, couldn't even tell you what was coming out of my checking account at that time, I get hit with an overdraft fee. Back then, right, they didn't have this overdraft protection like they have now, which I believe they shouldn't even have that because I think that's very dangerous as well. I have so many people come to me that depend on, oh, I don't get an overdraft fee, I'm able to take out $200, I'm allowed to get my account balance down to negative $200 before anything happens. To me, that's, that's really setting yourself back instead of forward, utilizing that feature, but that's just. How to close out on weekly paychecks. Okay, getting this a lot. How do I close out my budget if I am paid weekly? It's the same way you would do it if you were paid once a month like I am. I think what throws people off is because they're receiving not a paycheck on the first or the last day of the month like a lot of us who are paid monthly are. Instead, your last paycheck of the month is happening within that last week of the month, which means that last paycheck is going to be covering bills in the new month. And so closing out your budget can get confusing if you don't know about your starting balance and rolling over unused income. So like I said, when I used to get paid on the 20th, I would close out my budget, which means I would literally track all my spending until the very end of the month. Even though my last paycheck was on the 20th, I'd close it out. End of the month, last day of the month, I'd close it out even though that paycheck on the 20th was covering bills in the new month. I'd still close it out. 
money that what I was using to pay things in the new month, I would put my starting balance so I had it there to cover those bills and those expenses that I was using from my paycheck from the last, my last paycheck of this month to pay for those in the new month, if that makes sense. So I think that's where a lot of the confusion happens. How do you close out your budget when you're getting paid weekly? The process doesn't change. What changes is the amount of money that you're rolling over, your starting balance is the thing that's changing. That's what we do. We started with a rollover of 700, now we're up to $3,000 rollover. Yeah, you can definitely, it took me a while to grow my checking account cushion because I, in the very beginning, it started for me like $25. And now I'm up to over a thousand. You just learn, and that's another thing. How do you, like we talked about including your cushion in the inflow or income part of your um, budget if you know you're going to use it. We talked about just tracking that expense and letting your checking account cushion eat it. Even if it's not planned, that's fine. It's just gonna decrease your balance. But it's okay also to just let it build up slowly. You don't have to find a $1,000 laying around and stick it in there for your cushion. You can build it up over time. Also, include it as a fixed expense in your, in your budget, like clockwork. Every single time you get paid, $10 goes to just sitting in your checking account. It is not there to spend freely. That's another thing. Having a checking account cushion means that you've learned to be disciplined. Because it'll, unless you know, what, like, what, what I always tell myself so I don't spend it is, if I spend my checking account cushion now, what am I giving up in the future? Well, I'm giving up the stability. I'm giving up my opportunities to shop online if I need to. I'm giving up my peace of mind knowing I might have a bill that comes out that's higher than normal. I'm giving up a whole lot so I don't touch it because it has a purpose. And the purpose isn't there to spend freely. That's not its purpose. Yeah, I just keep $150. Yeah. Do you use your Filofax wallet? What is the wallet you use? I use a Moterm. Moterm, I think that's what it's called on Amazon. And I do, I, so I still have my file of facts. I kind of switch between the two. What if you make the payment ahead of the due date? Say pay water due on the 5th on the 28th. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. I only track my spending when it clears. How do you close out your budget when you have pending transactions? You don't count the pending transactions and you use the balance of your checking account without the pending transactions. Why? Because the pending transactions haven't happened yet. Do you know how many times in the beginning when I first started, this is a big reason why I don't include pending transactions on my expense tracker, on my budget, count on them, refer to them, or use them when I'm closing out my budget. Because back in the day, what I would do is, I would close out my budget with those pending transactions. That payment would clear and it would be different than the amount that was pending. Yes, the amount can change and it happens all the time. And then it throws off everything that you just did with closing out your budget, tracking your spending and all that. I only track when that expense or spending clears my account. It's no longer sitting at the top and pending. So, can you just start tracking from any day as where your account is right now? Absolutely, start right now. You can literally start right when you get off this video. Hi, Zoomers. We have Zoomers up. Come here. Let's see if you can come. Come here. Yeah, so, what if you make the, okay, so can you just, okay, we already helped that. I understand that you were explaining it, but visuals help. I agree with that, which is why I'm going to be posting some things all my stories after this um, video. Another thing, I did something very different for my budget recap coming to YouTube shortly. I know a lot of you have been missing Ryan on our budget recaps on YouTube. I promise you she's coming back, we just don't know when. I'm hoping it will happen for our March budget recap. So what I decided to do this month is instead of just sitting down and going over the where did my money go worksheets already filled out and going over my numbers, I literally did a video of me working out and closing out my budget in real time. Every single step 
of closing out my budget, I recorded on video. So it's like a step-by-step -step video of closing out your budget and what that looks like. So my Where Do My Money Go worksheets, they start out as blank. And throughout the video, I show you how to fill them out and where to find that information and the things that I do, the steps that I take for closing out my budget. So that is going to be for my February budget closeout. I know that I also miss January budget recap. We had a lot of things with the baby and now we have a new puppy and we're trying to get the baby shower all organized and all this stuff. A lot of things happening. But I miss January budget recap on YouTube. I'll be posting that first and then I'll post the step-by-step -step budget uh, video going over my Feb February budget recap. And I know that's going to help. I'll make sure I share that YouTube with you here on Instagram as well. What do you think about budgeting apps? I don't use them. I don't recommend them. No. I don't think any app or program should be doing this work for you, especially if you are just starting. I think you build the strongest foundation when you force yourself to learn every aspect of what you're doing. When you'll be releasing the new pens? Um, coming here shortly, probably by spring. Um, any thoughts on money market accounts? Uh, you have to ask yourself why money market account? Hi, LRP, when is it available? LRP is coming very, very soon, coming uh, closer to springtime. I will go sh make sure I post um, some other helpful resources outside of this video for closing out your budget. I wanna make sure you have all of those resources. Have you ever looked into Vanguard for investments? Yes, I've used Vanguard before. We did a lot of work with them when I was working in the finance industry. A perfectly fine broker. Uh, would you love, would love a smaller version of the wire bound of budget book pocket size, maybe a little bit bigger? Yes. So we tried that. We did do the budget by paycheck box set, which was smaller booklet forms. It's really hard for us to go any smaller than full size with the budget by paycheck workbook because everything gets compacted and so small. The print is so small. So I do not. Uh, do you use money market accounts or have any you would recommend? I don't use money market accounts, no. Um, is there a video in how to use the paycheck budget tracker if you get paid twice a month? Yep, there's a ton of videos saved here on Instagram with that. Is there an Excel version of your budget worksheet? Yes, check out my Building Blocks of Budgeting course. How would you budget if you get paid daily? Set dedicated budget days. If you are wondering if you get paid daily or get paid commission, go back and look at my Budget by Paycheck live Q&A. We go over those different types of scenarios, yes. All right, so thank you for joining me. I know it was kind of crazy. There's a lot going on in the background and all this stuff. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and send me a message here on Instagram. You can reach out to support at thebudgetmom.com. But once again, I just want to thank you for spending your valuable time here with me. I, it is an honor and blessing. I absolutely love talking to my community members in real time. So this is an actual treasure for me. So thank you. And I'll be back on probably tomorrow. I'll be also showing my chicken pot pie recipe later tonight. Bye. Utilizing that feature, but that's just... Oh, yes, your hair looks so good. So, yeah, okay, it, the lighting's kind of what's bad in here, but... <laughs> A little off topic, but...